ladies and gentlemen, this week's Warp World podcast. Cast, 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 cast. What's up, guys? Cast pod. Cast pod. D- did I do it right? Um, try again. Uh, podcast. Oops. You did it. Yeah. Way to go, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> He's getting so good at this, guys. It only took 142 episodes to get here. Not bad. Not, Not bad. Bad. 42, though. Pretty good. Mm. Pretty dang good. Oh. Yep. All right. Well, let's uh, let's just get right to it. Shoot us off, Chief. Uh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 142 of the Warp World podcast. I'm Graham Pooh Bear. Wait, wait. Hold on. Sorry. All right, the number one podcast for <laughs> gaming, Mario, and overall uh, sexy news. Uh, I'm Graham Pooh Bear. Uh, joining me here today, this week, and every week, we've got X Water. Hello, hello. And Jaku. Hello. Yes, yes. Big applause for Jaku. Uh, X Water. I gotta, I gotta notice. I'm, I'm a bit uh, shocked to see that you have a crown on today. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. the casino business been doing well. Uh, the, the surrounding, you know, island facilities have been funding it greatly. And uh, one of the biggest flexes in the game is, you know, taking a million dollars worth of tarantulas and building a building out of it. But the second biggest flex is wearing a hat that costs one point two million. So that's Damn. that's why I wanted to bring bring the crown today. I I'm I'm impressed. You know, I I I have been looking for a crown myself. I'm impressed to see you wearing it. I wouldn't just flex it in front of you, you know, like that. But now that I know you got one, I won't feel bad when when I when I obtain mine. Uh, it it looks really great. I I must admit. Um, I, I your whole outfit, your whole ensemble here today, down to the shoes, the pointy shoes is is spectacular. Uh, Thanks, man. Yeah, Jaku, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say, your character looks more and more like IRLU every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. slowly getting some things here and there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> go the so, opposite. So, direction. tell me about, tell me about your week here, uh, Jaku. You know, you're, you've been from last week to this week. You have uh, the turnip exchange has gone a little crazy. Uh, Sunday was a bit insane. You've been deemed the the Lord of Turnips by some people on the interwebs. Um, yeah. What what type of responsibility does that feel like? Um, you know, if X Water wants to follow me down stairs real quick, I can show him some stuff while I talk. Yeah, for sure. Okay. But um, okay. yeah, so Turnip Exchange has just blown up, and it has kept me up most nights. I've been able to get to bed most nights around five a.m. with a with a wake up around nine or ten last night i actually got to go to bed at two which was a nice change of pace but um we have been increasing our capacity adding servers and resources to ensure that you know the the servers are maintainable and the service doesn't lag and all that but it there's a lot we did not anticipate the as big of a demand um but we're dealing with it as we can and so you know we still got some room for some more servers and services here and uh should be good but you know it's 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 been a lot of work uh shout out to to chud breeder as well um who has done an amazing job with the ui of everything i've been doing all the back end stuff um and he has been just killing it with the ui and ensuring that everything goes goes very well yeah i love it it's great um it's 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 amazing how successful the turn up game is i've seen you know you know what the best part is like i've seen my wife and my brother-in-law like i've come downstairs and they're just like yeah i'm in a turn up queue right now and um, <laughs> it's been it's been just wonderful to see everyone you know uh getting rich off uh the turn up exchange so um let's move into some real game and not real gaming business not that turn ups aren't real gaming business i don't want to insinuate that at all i know turn ups are Damn serious right here for uh, the Animal Crossing faithful. But let's talk a little bit about uh, probably what was the biggest uh, news this week. And it may be a little bit of a of a shock to some people uh, in that the PS5 controller is not going to be a DualShock controller. <gasps> they're moving to what they're calling the DualSense controller. I was really holding out for a triple shock. A triple shock, right? Yeah. I mean, I, that's the shocker. I think that already has a name. 
Oh. And um, definitely means something else in some circles. But the I think the number one thing about the dual sense control, I think I think the two biggest things. Um, it has two color schemes: the white on black and black on black. The white on black, I don't like it. I don't like uh, it either. The black on black's fine, but it's it's it looks okay. This is going to be my opinion. Right here, it looks like a shittier Xbox controller. Ooh, like, right. Oh, yeah, that's I, what I said. That's yeah. that was my first thought. I agree. Um, and uh, so so yeah, Jack, you that you agree with me, X Water? What what do you think about it? I wouldn't go as far as to say like it does definitely resemble Xbox controllers more, and I think I think that makes sense in a lot of ways because like. For whatever reason, like at Xbox, like Microsoft has always been like, you know what we should do? Let's make a controller that feels good in your hands. And they started with like their big chunky boy and it was like, okay, well, that was a terrible mistake. Well, that's um, for Steve Ballmer. Uh, yo, I love that giant controller. hands. <laughs> yeah. And then once they like, after that, like their controller shape hasn't changed that much because they found a good... Nope comfortable shape for your hands meanwhile holding one of my hand yeah right. like meanwhile nintendo's like hey we got two remote controls and a tablet and you know the pro controllers have resembled them greatly as well and then now playstation's finally jumping into that same kind of boat where you know they're making a controller that fits that same ergonomic style that every other good feeling controller since 2012 has taken uh, so yeah. I think they're just kind of jumping on that same idea, but trying to keep it unique enough to be like their own, mm -hmm. which is I, why I, their like analog stick hasn't moved as well. Right. Yeah. I feel like that analog stick should move. Um, yeah. Like, like it, that's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. It just, mm -hmm. at this point, your the main control stick should be the easiest accessible. Um, it looks like it might be a little bit better than the previous controllers, but like, I don't know, the GameCube and the 360 and the Xbox One, they have it right. It's right there. It's the very first thing your thumb touches when you grab a controller. That D-pad looks kind of bad, too. And the buttons, they look really like... I can't tell how, like... How, how much uh, depth is there to the... Are. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. if they're they flush, that's fucked up. Yeah, that's going to be... That's going to suck so much. That would be yeah. weird. Yeah. It would be. And luckily, they're keeping the tradition of laying your controller down and fast forwarding on Netflix. Uh, right. Yeah. Controller. The back of the controller still has that like ridge popping out. So uh, it's I don't. I'm sure yeah. they've seen complaints about that. Like, you know. Yeah, we should we should sell an attachment to the controller to prevent that. Mm, smart. It's like five um, bucks. Attach it to it. All it does is block the plastic. That would sell. That would honestly it, sell. I know. It yeah. Would. It's silly no i i think it's it, it's gonna take some getting used to um it doesn't look as good as their is their cool classic and that was part of sony's appeal honestly mm -hmm. if you ask me was like that their controller had never really changed like sure it had yeah. gone some minor revisions but overall it's like you know you see those memes and it's always like sony's sony's like if it ain't broke don't fix it you know yeah mm -hmm. and uh yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with that. I, I think uh, I don't hate the DualShock at all. Same. Um, I think the DualShock's a fine control. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say it's on the the level of the Xbox One or the Xbox Elite controller, which I think the Xbox Elite controller is probably the best controller on the market. But it is two hundred fucking dollars, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's and, the price of a system. Oh yeah, and it's also, and it's also, fuck, it's like, it's like it's the heaviest controller i've ever held in my hands by far you know what i mean it it dwarfs the um the uh Duke. wii u controller and weight it's insane oh, oh, okay. but, oh, wow. but it's beautiful what's up uh, sorry, yeah no i didn't I, I i was gonna say i said the duke controller but then you said the wii u and i'm like oh, no yeah, the du yeah. dude the duke is, i love the duke i, I don't oh, know I why know. everyone's such a big duke no i was talking about the weight the weight of it no, the weight of it's just it's a heavy controller, but yeah. it, at the same time, I do think it's probably the best controller on the market. I, it, but I don't think the DualShock's bad. I I think what you said right there about the joystick. I think having the joystick in that position with this particular style of controller is mm -hmm. seems like such a weird, strange choice. Uh, 
it doesn't yeah. make any sense to me at all. Like it makes no sense to me at all to do that. It it seems like that's going to be very very uncomfortable. Um, which I think that's kind of already the worst part about the Dual Shock controller. Mm -hmm. uh, is that situation, and I I don't get why Sony couldn't just switch the D pad and the controller, you know, and the joystick at at this point. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't I don't. Because that D-pad is unnecessarily big, and like mm -hmm. I'm tell I've I'm I've been racking my brain for the last twenty seconds. I can't tell you one game on PlayStation Four where the D-pad is the primary control scheme. I can't think of one. I have no idea. Right. None of the games I've played on the PlayStation Four, like even Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, those are like the closest I can get. But I'm not using the D-pad on those. I'm using the stick. Yeah, I can't think of one either. I mean, yeah. I can't even think of like a two D game. On. Yeah, because if you're playing an indie game, you're buying it on your Switch already. <laughs> like, that's just the fact you'd rather have that portability. Although, uh, slight sidebar, I actually kind of got a little, f not, not frustrated, but a little annoyed with playing an indie game on the Switch recently. Because I bought that uh, new Battle Network inspired game, One Step from Eden. And mm -hmm. yeah. it has like a lot of shit going on in the screen in the final levels and the switch started to like lag up when I was in a boss level like at the end and I, oh. I died and everything and I was sitting there like I probably would have died anyway, but I was upset that my console was lagging on an indie game. I was like, that's not that's not right, dude. I mean, right. it, just because it's indie game doesn't mean it's not like graphically impressive. Yeah, but it's also like. It's like a, a pixel art kind of game. Like, there's a oh, lot going on on the screen, but at the same time, like, I'm sure just the amount that was happening was also just kind of fucking with it. But yeah, um, I, I was watching you play it not not recently, but when you first started, yeah, uh, playing it, it looked cool. It looked really neat. It is a um, really cool game. I like it a lot. We met that yeah. guy at GDC. The the guy who makes it, Thomas Moon Kang. We oh. met him. Uh, yeah, he was he was really cool. I talked I talked to him about putting crowd control in it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. We need to we need to follow up on that. Yeah, like, you no, know. definitely. Um, but back to back to the dual sense controller. Have you guys read about any of the like new functionality about it, quote unquote? I well, like hear, I hear it predicts what you're going to press before you press it, so you don't even have to hold the controller. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I read uh, it on on the hard times. No, so that, that, I don't think that's true. Um, I mean, I've seen that it brings back the, um, brings back the touchscreen, which, mm -hmm. I mean, or like touch sen or sensor Wait, pad. Or is that a touchpad yeah, on the, the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Touchpad. Yeah, it is touchpad on it. Which, oh, I thought, again, because, sorry, on the site, I read that, I thought I read that they took it out. Oh. No. That big middle I mean, area I thought was just blank. If that's no. blank, that is the stupidest no. blank space <laughs> definitely, definitely the touchpad. Yeah, you, definitely 100% the touchpad. Because people were talking about it, and I agree with this. Like, I don't see the reason to bring the touchpad back at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. No, I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to find the part. But in their like on the PlayStation blog, they had a spe yeah right here. Um, based on our discussions with developers, we concluded that the sense of touch within gameplay much like audio, hasn't been a big focus for many games. So it, I read that and I was like, yeah, so why the fuck would you put the touchpad back? Like, nobody nobody wants it. Backwards compatibility. I guess that makes sense, actually, yeah. Yeah. At least yeah. for this. Well, yeah. I mean, whoop <laughs> I mean, No, I mean, they need to do it at least on one generation. But yeah. Because if the, the rumors yeah. are that the PS5 is going to play everything, right? I mean, I that, those, so. yeah. those rumors are floating around every time a new console is coming out, though. Yeah, um, here they're gonna make Final Fantasy VIII on it. Oh, dude, that'd be—that's the next step. <laughs> it, it it is the next step, but you're gonna at the end of the PlayStation Five launch or uh, uh, lifetime. Oh, good. Yeah, that's, that's an accurate works. life cycle. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so the thing, the other new feature I was looking at is um, adaptive, adaptive. What was the word? Hold on, I'm finding it. It has to do with the triggers. Adaptive tension? Yeah. 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 So, like, it's, it can... They, the controller, based on the game, can make it harder or easier to press in the L2 and R2 buttons. So, like, yep. if you're drawing a bowstring, like, the first 75% of pressing the trigger down requires a certain amount of force. And then 
the next the last 25 percent requires some more force that's gonna break that's a very weird like that's just like technically impressive to think about it is and that's gonna be weird to imagine how developers choose to use that yeah well it's gonna break that's my thought is like you think people so? are gonna press really hard like right away and it's like people are gonna try to press harder than they should um well i mean it is a button it is gonna be like yeah. and if you have something trying to restrict you from pressing that button well, it's, it's not gonna. It's not out. like trying to restrict you from pressing. It's just well, adding a slight amount of tension to right. press it. You know what I mean? Right. But, but even a little bit of tension is like kind of more than it should. Hey, I, I mean, I'm. I'm know? sure they've. I'm sure they've thought about that. You know, I have to think that they've thought sure about they, that too. I'm sure they. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, I. I feel like Xbox One has that right now though too, and I don't. Can't remember no, a game Xbox ever using One, it. One. Those have like the pressure sense, like they can sense how much you press. It doesn't push back. No, no. I thought it had haptic feedback. That's that's just rumble, man. Yeah, yeah. That's just right. that's just rumble. Uh, I mean, it's still not impressive as the cool rumble that like the the switch has that never gets used, where it like lets you feel like the marbles inside of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my god, that was so rumble. cool, and I've never yeah. seen another game use Joy Cons for anything cool like that. They literally put that in there for one, two switch. And that's why joy cons are $90. You know, right? <laughs> that is, that is yeah. why it's like, at, well, here's a $30 game. Well, how do we make our money back? Make the controllers 90. Yeah. Uh, 700 okay. IQ. Yeah. yeah. It was a genius fucking move, honestly. Yeah, that is a pretty good move. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's always interesting. Whenever Sony does go away from the traditional style, there's, there's a lot of feedback. There's a lot of pushback from people. The PlayStation 3 had that boomerang controller that showed off. Oh, yeah, um, the boomerang. Yeah. And, and oh, this, yeah. This looks more boomerang. Um, this does, yeah. So it looks like they like, we want to bring it, but we can't make it that much of a boomerang or battering. It looked like a battering. Um, so like, yeah, it's, it's neat. But yeah, I think move the d-pad sony it's been 20 30 years who knows how long yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna change the controller like go Update. all the way why why do this weird like oreo you know cookies and cream controller yeah. scheme and weird shape and not just go all the way and move the analog stick yeah plus yeah. I, I hope Microsoft also learns from this, but like white controllers are probably like they look nice when they're new. Yeah, when they're new. But my goodness. Yeah, after, the Dorito after, dust. Yeah. I'm looking at an, my old Xbox 360 controller right now, and it is yep. not. It is. She's seen better days. Yeah. I so, fun. Fa so when uh, when I was in Japan for Platinum Games, uh, Wonderful 101, we had to go. Um, the controller that they had at the studio wasn't working with the the PC and stuff for what we needed, and I had brought a 360 controller and it was in my in my room um, back at the Airbnb, and so it's only like a 10 minute walk. So I went back to grab it and I look at the controller. I'm like, this is my testing controller. No one's ever gonna see this, and I'm like, shit, no, people are gonna see this, and Hideki Kamiya is gonna play on this controller. So I had to clean it. <laughs> I had to find like all these things to clean it because it was it wasn't like it wasn't like I'm not. I guess it wasn't super bad, but it was just like enough dirt where I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't pass this to him. He, he, yeah, you didn't want it. You didn't want the them to look at you weird with a dirty ass controller, yeah. you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was just I like, feel that. let me clean this real quick. Yeah, and even if like, like the dirt, dirt aside, like look at any SNES controller from oh, yeah. way back, like white, or, white and like gray and light colored controllers. Just get that weird yellowing plastic to them they never keep that like clean look whereas black controllers just always just you know they kind of just always look sleek yeah just always look good, they yeah. always they yeah and, and i mean i think we can all agree it's it's a interesting design choice mm -hmm. um i'm surprised that they went with this I, I think, it, honestly, I think it would be fine if they did just move the joystick, but um, I don't know. I mean, I, I I like the way the DualShock feels. I didn't, I didn't, I don't think that that's any, that's what was wrong with Sony's consoles by any means. You know, right. I don't think anything's really wrong with Sony consoles besides maybe that, that fucking shitty ass UI they have. Um, <laughs> I just, I dude, just, the UI is horrible. Like, can we all agree on that? The crossbar I, thing? Yeah, it's horrible. I hate it. 
the, you know what came you know what had that first you know what's first what the first sony product was that had it was it their tvs I don't know. it was the psx oh or or maybe it was the tv and then the psx what you're a- right it, it, it was either one of those and then it went to the psp and then the ps3 and and whatnot i i i i it gets kind of crazy, I think, that menu system does. It works okay when you have, like, very little. But then once you start adding games and stuff, and I got these folders and stuff, things can be all over the place, and it can get yeah. a little crazy. I, I am not a fan. Like, that's one thing I think Xbox does really well is, well, I mean, obviously, Windows. Um, but it's just, you know, freaking the UI is just so much better. Yep. I've never really had a problem with the PlayStation yeah. UI, but I've also never really used um, an Xbox beyond, like, I had, like, my Xbox 360 on the old, old UI, like, before that new update that changed it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I never, like, used the Xbox One. So the PlayStation UI has always been fine with me because I did a lot of gaming on my PSP as a teenager, so I was just, like, used to it. That's fair. Yeah. Sony, man. Change yeah. Controller. No, but uh, one, I will say one other positive thing of the controller. The light bar leaking through th- to the front. Oh, so, you can so actually much see nicer. It. Yeah. Yeah. Because before it was this cool, like, gamers love their little LED accenting and they put theirs, like, hidden on the top of the controller where the yeah. person playing can never see it. Yeah. I, you, know what, you know what the PlayStation Lite really was for? It was so that parents could catch their kids playing games late at night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just turn off the tv mom doesn't have to know yeah like that was the trick you would turn off the tv or or something but now put a little piece of electrical tape in front like on the little light on the n64 yeah 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 we did that oh man good times and that was like Uh, a console that didn't have a disc spinning so didn't even make noise it was just like oh "Oh, guess the kids are asleep that's a good point yeah Yeah. think about that the gamecube not as free Mm mm-hmm you could you could listen for it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time you were fine, but uh, it was still something you had to think about. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Um, it reminds I mean it reminds me of the days of playing Resident Evil, really, because that's that was the game that I would stay up late on, you know, and like yeah, it had a loading, but like they didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, you have, fan, you have a fan on in the room, you're good. You just got to make sure you get the, that TV off as quick as possible, and as soon as you hear a footstep. It's like, I got I to gotta fish Resident Evil 2 tonight. I got to. <laughs> you started playing the new one, uh, Resident Evil 3, yeah? Yeah. I, 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 I finished it last night. Oh, nice. Um, Pooh, did you play it too? Uh, I haven't played it yet, actually, um, which is funny because I love, you know, RE1, 2, and 3 so much. Um, but yeah, I just haven't got a chance to, to play it. It just hasn't, hasn't worked on my schedule. I really want to play it at night, mm-hmm. and I just haven't had an opportunity to stream at night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so... Yeah. It's my first uh, horror game that I streamed. Oh, oh, really? You've never streamed a horror game before? Yeah, I mean, like Dead by Daylight and uh, Friday the Thirteenth, yeah. technically, but meh, right? Um, Doesn't really count. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yes, yeah, so I streamed on Monday and Wednesday. Um, I wanted to play it over the weekend because when we talked, Pooh, you're like, "Yeah, I'm going to play it probably, you know, Saturday or or Monday or something." Okay, I'll yeah. it before I, but uh, obviously that didn't happen. Um, no, nope. and. Uh, <laughs> And I, I didn't get to play it over the weekend because Turnip Exchange. Um, I know Moni's going to be really mad about my comment about Dead by Daylight. And by that, I mean like meh compared to just a single player game. I don't mean meh as in the game's meh, Moni. So when you hear this, stop freaking out. Um, <laughs> but uh, the the it was fun. I, I got to say it was a fun game. Uh, I won't get into any spoilers for you, Pooh. Um, I will say I, I kind of think I might like the original three more. I oh, don't, yeah, um, they changed some things with it, but I'm not going to say what and why or whatever. Uh, we can talk about it after you play, maybe. Um, I think I might want to go back and play the original though, just to make sure. So there might be some more Resident Evil Three in my in my in my future, but um, it was it, it was it was a fun experience. It, I think two was a better version. Of the remake was better um, mm-hmm. than three. Uh, for different reasons uh, that, again, I can't get into, uh, maybe next week. But it was still a great game. I definitely am interested in playing it again and replaying it. And I know, like, Failstream, good friend of the podcast and Warp World, he has played it, like, four or five times already. Um, he's on Nightmare Mode or something, and he's like, it's completely different. It's so cool. And they have, like, a randomizer built in. So, oh, that's I know. Dope. 
Yeah, items and enemies, I guess, can be in different spots. I haven't does, checked it out yet. Doesn't it have like a multiplayer mode too? It does. Resident Evil Resistance. Um, Cliffy has been trying to get a group of us to play, except he is a PlayStation person and you, it's no cross play. Uh, I get a PC, Cliffy. Jeez. <laughs> um, he has one. He has one capable of playing it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. I won't. I won't knock Cliffy for that. I mean, uh, man, you know what? Can we go into this week's hot take right now? Um, I have we, a hot take. Oh, all right, let's go to the hot take. Yeah, yeah, early hot take. Let's do it. Hot take. Early hot right. take. Hot take. Hot take. Hot take. Uh, an early hot take. I know it's exciting. Uh, Resident Evil Three uh, is a sixty dollars video game. And uh, a lot of people are upset about that because uh, the solo campaign one time through only has about five and a half hours, mm -hmm. uh, maybe six hours of gameplay, let's say. Uh, Jaku, first of all, did you find that to be the case? And secondly, do you feel like it should be a cheaper game because of that? And to a broader sense, does the time spent with a game, should that matter on the price? Sure. Okay. Um, great, great hot take. Number one, uh, mm -hmm. number two. Yeah. So $60 game for what is a remake? Number one, like that's another part of this, right? It's a remake. Um, the original Resident Evil three was shorter than Resident Evil two. It was on one disc. It, you could go through it much faster. You could beat it in a night. Um, your first time. Well, you so, could be Resident Evil two in a night. I mean, your like your first, first time too, really. You could. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, Resident Evil Two is only like eight hours. It's not like it's like significantly more. No, but I mean, I'm but like, does Resident Evil like Three a, have the same kind of like Leon and Claire and the no, A and B no, side system? No. So, mm -mm. so what Resident Evil Three originally had, which was really cool, was these moments. They were like quick time events, but it was a choice that you had to make. Uh -huh. So you'd be you'd be on a. Uh, the the nemesis would be walking towards you and you could either push him down and run past him or jump off the bridge yourself was your was your strat yeah um, and the choice and so you like, made would like change the, the outcome of yeah. this playthrough mm -hmm. gotcha yeah and so some choices were the better choices to get the better ending and it, fun fact the the better choice for that one right there that one particular one that i gave you is to push him down and run past him not to jump off the bridge. Well, that seems now, like a choice that I wouldn't make my first time around. Yeah, right? Yeah, you definitely was, jump off the bridge. Yeah, when I was 14 playing this game, I was like, there's no way I can push him down. He's a freaking tank. I'm jumping off the bridge. <laughs> and then I find out later, you're supposed to push him down. <laughs> but I digress. Um, and so that that really expanded on that version of the game. Um, the new Resident Evil remake does not have those choices, which is unfortunate. Um, but it, it's still fine. I think... I was able I was able to beat it in two streams, three, four hours each, give or mm -hmm. take. Um, so you know, six six to eight hours is what it took me. I think I think it was just around seven hours on my total time. But I, I dicked around a lot. I did die quite a few times too. I yeah. found it. Did you play on hardcore? No, I did standard first, okay. um, just because I wanted to play it. I didn't want to be stuck playing it um, right away. I wanted yeah. to get to other things. But now that I played it, I definitely want to get back into it. Um, but uh, the the um it was it was fun and and i think the six dollars like i didn't i didn't i didn't think a second chance for it like and i don't regret the six dollars and i'm currently unemployed um so like i like it i think i think yeah six dollars was worth it plus you get resistance included with it um which i think that was capcom's way of being like we understand it's a remake we get it's it. a yeah. shorter game we're gonna give you something extra i would have never bought resistance on its own but now that it's included, I'm going to check it out. And it's probably going to be fun. Um, um, yeah. So to the broader sense, like uh, X Water, what do you think? Do you think that the amount of time you spend with a game correlates to how much it should cost? I, I don't. I think that a game should like... There, the the sixty dollar price point on your average triple A game does kind of feel sort of arbitrary, but at the same mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like that is the price of a lot of triple A games, and whether or not you get a certain amount of hours out of it doesn't really. I don't know. I don't. I don't see a game as some like. All right, I gave you sixty bucks. Entertain me for at least ten hours, or this sucks. Like I've yeah. played games for four hours before then i spent 
you know, 30, 60 bucks on it. And I've been like, that was sick. I've played 60 hours of some games that I spent 60 bucks on. I'm like, this game is fucking stupid. Like there's <laughs> the, the amount of time you sink into a game is, is what it is. It's the amount of time you put in. It doesn't make it better or worse. I, I, I probably won't pick up Resident Evil 3 for $60 just because I like I'm I'm not as hardcore into that series. I I would well, try the right. game out for thirty dollars because I am a thrifty individual. So I'll wait until you know I'll wait a year from now. I'm not itching to play it or anything. So I'll play it when I can get it for a little cheaper. But I I don't I don't really like the or agree with the notion that a game has to provide you with X hours of gameplay to be worth its price tag. It's like it's worth whatever it's worth to you if you don't think you want to pay $60 for a game that's five hours, like then don't, you know, they're not, they don't have to, you don't have to, no one's forcing you to. Yeah. And I, what I would like to see though, is a, a change in the current, uh, like game pricing model where games can be priced a bit better with like 40 to 80 being the range. Yeah. Some games might be 80 bucks and some games might be $40. And you see that very rarely with some games where they're like $40 or $50. Um, but I think if, if there was a broader range where it's like, this game is a $40 game, this game's an $80 game, and it's up to the choice of the publisher, developers, whatever, um, I think consumers would be okay with that and it was like that in the 90s like old nintendo cartridges and n64 cartridges were not a standard msrp for all the games because mm -hmm. some of them did take bigger memory chips and stuff and it cost more and they put that onto the consumers but i would much rather see uh, 40 to 80 dollar range games and let the consumers decide where what that game's worth and d you know publishers can start higher and if it's not selling well they can lower it um at the end of the day but having it, every game be 60 if it's like an actual game or like 20, if it's an indie game seems kind of silly. Um, mm -hmm. It just, and I, there are exceptions to that, but I wish there was, it was less of an exceptions thing and more of a broad thing. Yeah. What, what's one game where I, I totally agree with the, I don't think that game price is, should be related to hours. I think game price should more be related to how much money it costs to make the game whatever that was, whatever that number is, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of my opinion. Like, Limbo is a, uh, Limbo and Inside are two games that, you know, are, they're $15 games, but if I paid $60 for Inside, I would not have been mad at all. Mm -hmm. I played it for four hours, you know what I mean? I would totally, totally worth the 60, if it would have been a $60 game, I would have been, I, I understand why other people might have felt cheated. I definitely wouldn't have, you know? Like, that thing right. was fucking incredible to me. Um... So I, I think that like there is I, I I don't like that notion that like just because a game is only six, seven, eight hours that it can't be a sixty dollar game or because I, I think there's plenty of uh, examples of the opposite being true. You know, like mm -hmm. PUBG is a thirty dollar game and people have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours into that game. Wait, you have um, to pay money for that? Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't it's remember. not even a free game. I don't even remember paying money for that. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they, yeah, that's a good example. You know what I mean? Like, there's just so many examples of what do I want to say? Like, break games that are cheap that you can get the the value. I, I don't know. Well, I just don't think that matters. Yeah. Well, you know Minecraft, what I mean? I don't think right? Hours spent. Yeah, Minecraft is a great example. It's a thirty dollar game, right? You know, what it I mean? was like ten dollars when when it first came out, sort yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. And, millions of hours people got millions of hours yeah and there's probably billions if not trillions of hours played globally which is a huge hit to our economy notch so good job there. <laughs> um, yeah it even goes that. like by the same if, if a game's hours dictate its value then like any game with high replay value should be 100 200 500 mm -hmm. like if i can get a thousand hours out of a game like i should have spent I don't know, like three hundred dollars on fucking Warcraft Three or Mario Maker yeah. or Super Mario World, like right. But that's it, imagine, not what yeah. it is because the imagine hours you get you out charged. of it is however many you want to put into it. And if it has a short yeah. campaign, it has a short campaign, and that's I I do see that as like a something that holds that game back. Like mm -hmm. obviously, any consumer is going to be like. All right, I, I like I like this game. I like the way it is, and by ha like with a longer 
a longer game that has like you know that's not just padded gameplay like a legitimate longer fun yeah. game will add to that but, but if it's yeah, not there it's not you, there how do you decide exactly like how do you decide what's padded gameplay and what's not it, right especially in like something like resident evil 3 like i think one of the things with resident evil 3 being so short and why it has to be short is the the danger of Nemesis wears off after about five hours. You know what I mean? It just does. Like, that's how it kind of goes. You know what I mean? You, you're not scared of him after a while. And if you played 17 hours of that, you know what I mean? That might not make for the best experience. Whereas five hours of being chased around mercifully by a yeah. by a tyrant is not, you know, that's that's a lot easier to handle, a lot easier to consume, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's, that's not know. completely fair. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I don't for know. For that like, particular game, yeah. For sure. And I, again, like, I think, like, people discount replays a lot. And for a lot of people, they just want to play the game experience once and just put once. it down. And I get yeah. that. But you know what? You're not, you, you can still rent games. There's Gamefly. There's other ways to, like, is that. there? I, you know what? I was, I, I actually is. got on a Twitter. Is Gamefly still around? I thought it was gone. I'm 99% sure. I think they uh, might still exist. Yeah. Like, I think I think that it still exists. I'm googling it right now. Gamefly. I am too. Yeah, oh, it, no, it does. Trial. It does. Get your free trial. At game uh, Gamefly.com. Free trial. trial. Their header bar on the site is Resident Evil Three. There you go. That's the perfect example. Um, but no, like oh, they can, they rent movies too, dude. Now, oh man, yeah, you, I'm gonna you, sign oh up for God. Gamefly. Damn. You could what you could do if if you're not looking to spend six dollars on a game that's six hours because you you know you want to make sure that you spend your money on things that you're going to enjoy for a long time you wait a few weeks to play the games yeah it's unfortunate but you can get them used you can potentially rent them you could borrow them from a friend yeah like there's many options out there for you if if you think six hours is not enough that's ten dollars an hour if you were to break it down by hour essentially and i think that's fair uh movie tickets are like twenty dollars for like two hours it's about the same thing not if you go Some on movies. Cheap Tuesday. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. If you go on Cheap Tuesday, <laughs> then, then you can see five movies for that cost. And you're like, hell yeah. I don't know why back I spend it Tuesday. Yeah. Back to back. Man, I drink too much soda. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, 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 everyone has their opinion on things. And like, you have your own choice on how to spend your money. But I think games are worth what you want to pay. And if, if it's not enough yeah. for you, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my thing. I, I don't think, I don't think it's inherently a bad game because of the price tag. I think like people like end up saying that, you know what I mean? I don't think you get ripped off if you only get six hours of gameplay for $60. Like I think it's all just based on the amount of fun you have. You know what I mean? There's plenty of games. Like I, I tell you right now, I, I definitely want to play six hours of six hours of uh, Resident Evil three over, you know, 40 hours of assassin's creed 45 you know what i mean sure. <laughs> um, that's just and that's just the fact of it well, well and done. that's a that's a good game to give you a an example of a game that pads their gameplay to get more hours mm -hmm. is assassin's creed um and that's that's a game that i actually like really bugs me because assassin's creed odyssey and uh origins the two of those games had uh essentially like in-game items that were you know you know you buy this experience booster and you ex you level up faster so you can go through the main story faster if you don't you have to you have to basically spend between each segment of the main story you have to spend a couple hours doing side quests to ha be a strong enough level to do the other content where they don't give you the option to just go through the main story if you want to. They're like, nope, you got to go grind out five levels now or you will get demolished in the next section. Unless you buy an experience booster. Then you can get there whenever the fuck you want. Yeah. That's, that's kind of good. insane to me. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're hoarding off the padded content. <sighs> they're... <laughs> yeah, they're letting you pay to skip the padding. Hmm. Yeah, it's like you already paid 60 for the game though it's not like it's that that model works on free to play it doesn't you know what yeah i was gonna say like that that's the type of shit that prevents us from getting a free to play mario maker which would be an infinitely better system for that particular game um because people are always like i hate microtransaction it's like well 
You know what? That is a good example of a significantly bad microtransaction that shouldn't exist. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, wow. I would love for a free to play Mario Maker. Play the levels for free. You can't download or you, yeah, you can't download them and you can't uh, uh, edit, but you can play some levels or maybe you can only play 10 levels a day. Who cares? Get people hooked. Um, well, OK, no. So free to play. <laughs> this is how free to play Mario Maker works. You can play as many levels as you want, right? as many levels as you possibly want. Um, you're never barred from playing any levels at all, right? Okay. You only pay for, like, backgrounds and new characters to play as, like, you know, Mario or Luigi or Mega Man. They could have all sorts of different characters, you know what I mean? Um, like they did in the original game. New characters to play as, backgrounds, music. You can pay for new music um, in the game. So basically you're just, like, monetizing the creators, mm -hmm. more or less. Um, but the creators are gonna fucking hey, out the wazoo. They'll buy everything. You know what I mean? Every single right, right, fucking right. thing. You know, new items, whatever it is you bring out. But people can just play forever as long as they have the Nintendo Network. Sure. You know. Yeah, that's the hook. Nintendo Network. Yep. That would be. Yeah. That yeah. would make it worth it. IMO, in my opinion. Now, I I don't know if they would make more or less money. I mean, I don't know how much money they made off Mario Maker, mm. but I have to feel like. There's pro I don't know, like I'm not alone in saying that there's probably not an amount of money that is too much that I would spend on more shit in Mario Maker right. myself, which is, I, I mean, I hate to say that, you know what I mean? Because I don't like being part of the problem, but like, straight up, I would subsidize a lot of people's games, you know? Uh -huh. Did you guys see the maintenance for Mario Maker last night? Not no. me. No. There was uh, server maintenance for Mario Maker. It was down for about an hour or so, along with Pokemon, which makes me feel like we're not getting anything special unfortunately okay. uh well animal, Cross animal crossing was down four times in one week for updates and so it's now got more updates than mario maker has had <laughs> it's also got I a mean, lot I... of people playing it compared to maker yeah too. there are there are i'm not i'm just throwing shade yeah. where i can i think that there is i mean i think with the 35th anniversary stuff happening mm -hmm. there is a chance that we could get some hot one maybe one more update of Mario Maker 2. I would expect yeah, that I, at the very least. Yeah. I don't know if we would get more than one update. Um, I mean, it's been about a year now since they announced Mario Maker 2. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I, I don't know if we'll get more than one update, but one update, one more significant update seems like it's in the cards, I want to say. It's definitely you know? gonna be eggs. They're just gonna give us Yoshi eggs. That you can put in the ground, you can put in trees, you can put in water. Put them in rocks, put them in the sky. Yeah. yeah. Nintendo's an egg company now. All right. We <laughs> we do need to at least address the eggs a little bit today. We do. Okay. Have Cause... you guys had too many eggs on your islands? <sighs> I haven't fished all week. I, I literally refuse to fish right now. Same. Without yeah, I bait. gave up fishing I'll, I'll for fish a while. Bait. Yeah, I refuse to fish right now. Um, which has been okay since I got terraforming this week, so nice. that's been fun. But yeah, I refuse to fish. I've got terraforming yet. Um, mm -hmm. I'm close. Nice. It it's so nice when you get it. It's oh my uh, my my creativity juices just went all over the place once I got terraforming. It was great. Sure. I've uh, I, I made I made one of those fancy like waterfall hallways and that's yeah, about it. those are dope. Yeah. Um, you kind you kind of got to have one, you know what I mean? Like, yep, I put waterfalls on the uh, lobby of Tarantula Casino. I feel you. Oh, I, oh, oh, yeah. that's gonna be sharp. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait to come back for some deal or no deal. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'm excited for that too. Um, when are we, we doing that? Uh, I hope by so, sometime next week. I'm guess I'm gonna try and aim for Wednesday, but I'll let you guys know more details. Right. But yeah, it's it's a super sick setup. It's um. There's 12 briefcases, 12 little tables set up on different cliff levels. So mm. um, like from the ground floor, the person playing and the host can see all the cases. And then we got like on one of the cliffs, uh, a chair that's like facing away from the contestant. And it's got like a table in front of it with a computer and a briefcase filled with like, literally there's an item that's a briefcase filled with cash. Like, yep. It's hilarious. So there's I've one of those that. on it and uh, it's got like a little phone on the desk and the there's a phone by like the contestant as well. So I'm rigging up like sound effects and everything like I want to have an actual phone playing when it's time to call between the banker and the uh, 
and the and the contestant and everything. It's gonna be like a full wacky fucking production. The only issue is I don't remember the, exactly how Deal or No Deal works, so I gotta go watch an right. episode or two. Oh, I, okay. I, I, can, I can give some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, why don't you just yeah just watch an episode? I'm a little I'm a little perturbed at Feeny's lack of Survivor knowledge for hosting Survivor. <laughs> like it it legit bothers me. Um, in some ways, like the whole voting out in public thing was absolute bullshit. I just want to say, yeah, that was it ridiculous. Needs to be kept secret. Absolute Dude, if- bullshit was my trademark phrase during all of my testimonies last week. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, did you did you volunteer to vote yourself out? Next I did. Or Space Cat and um... I volunteered. Yeah. Why? Just because you thought? Just because your team got screwed on the first set of games? One of us had to be out, and yeah, I was like, we we were having a we were having a rough a rough section. Because you know what? If, let's let's just dive into the whole Survivor thing too. Because we might as well since we're here and okay, we're, yeah. we're on the let, podcast, let me, let's right? Preface this. Like, yeah. We gotta preface this. Let's so tell them all about in- it. We're involved in a, an x Wonder still has to be involved. I'm pretty sure he's jury now. <laughs> um, yeah, we're involved in a Animal Crossing Survivor game uh, right now, which is exactly what you think, just like the show Survivor, but with Animal Crossing. Um, it's fucking awesome. Uh, but I will say last week, x Water, x Water, the tribes weren't even, and x Water's tribe definitely was probably built to lose. The producers probably <laughs> built you guys to lose so yeah. they could introduce a twist. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was it was rough. So there was three games. The first game was um poop and cherry. Po- yeah, the pooping contest where cherry. you had to go get a cherry, eat it and then poop. Poop it. And the, the it was 3 Our versus definitely cheated. 4. So already we're down a person in terms of how many people can be eating and pooping. And the, the, the funny part was, is that you, Jakku, in the spirit of Jakku, you went fully chaos mode and you went and instead of like eating, you went just went and rounded up all of the cherries and started slowly dropping them for your teammates. Yep. So there was none left on the trees. Like oh, my team couldn't get any more. We were panicking. We're like, "What's going on? We can't get any. We can't get any." And I'm like, "He's got him. He's got him. Stand next to Jakku." And I was able to grab one from you, but I didn't have I didn't have enough time to eat it. Um, yeah. But anyway, so at the end of that, so we we count up the totals, and it's a tie between amounts of <laughs> toilets Oops. flushed. It's a tie in a game where there was a team of three versus a team of four, and then. Because the the deciding factor there was Jakku had more cherries in his inventory, so you guys won. And I was like, well, that just doesn't make sense. Really <laughs> that didn't it. make sense because Jakku was, yeah. No, yeah. I, I would totally agree I, with yeah, you that. I agree with that. That, that, was, <laughs> that was bullshit. That tiebreaker was bullshit. And then the fish game made no sense. Oh, my God. It uh, made no the, sense. The cherries, it should have been whoever had the least amount of cherries on them, to be fair. I... I Okay, yeah, I, I, I want to like, I want to like take Fiend aside. I, I want to do this again because, like, with all, I mean, I watch a lot of Survivor and a lot of Big Brother. There's actually, yeah. I realize now, a lot of games we totally play, right? Um, and I, and I would love to do it, but uh, like, she, it, the, the fish game made no sense, and that, that was the game I could tell where your, your, the straw had broken the camel's back because. <laughs> 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 because I had two sea bass and we weren't supposed to double up, but somehow I got to play two sea bass and you didn't get to play any sea bass. So. What I remember happening, because it was me versus you, where I played, I think, a loach and that's yeah. worth 400, yeah. and you played a sea bass, which is worth 400. And then in the previous. In the previous one of the previous rounds, like people went back and forth continuing to display fish until they were out. So I was like, okay, then I'll display my carp, whatever fish I had that was another $400 yeah. fish. And you put out an egg. And I was like, okay, my carp then beats his egg. Or know. my okay. sum of two fishes beats his sum of fish and egg. But for whatever reason, you and I were a tie. And I was like, I was again, like, what's going on? I don't get well, it. it. Because I made a very convincing argument that that egg was worth 10,000 bells. Ah, uh, yes. Everybody, everybody fell for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, no, I do you... wish that 
You yeah, said no. it right. It was definitely a straw on the camel's back that made him a little a little sore. If <laughs> you get my drift. Yeah. No, I, um, I, I, I feel for you because like it would be better if the, the rules were explained a little bit more and like that they were actually like, I don't know, followed completely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> coming from the guy was... whose number one goal was to find loopholes. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, I love when rules are written out. Yeah, and then I can find the loopholes. Yeah, like, and that's that was the thing because David yeah. and Space Cat, when we were in our area, they were like, "Chaku's cheating!" I can't believe it. I'm like, oh, "I know, I know, I'm upset too, guys." But he didn't cheat. He just yeah. found loopholes. Like he didn't cheat is the thing. In fact, mm -hmm. I actually tried to cheat at one point. <laughs> what did you try to cheat with? <laughs> During the ringing the bell round, I definitely was like, I totally rung the bell. You guys are bullshitting me. I was going to blame it on oh, like yeah, leg. No, I remember that, yeah, dude. Yeah. It was like, you're nowhere near ringing the bell. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, was, I was going full out cutthroat at that point. That, that's the thing about me, though. I don't, I don't cheat. I just take the rules and I find the, the spot that's missing. Exactly. Like, I'm, I'm against, you know, like the... The all the other people's testimonials and stuff are confessionals, you know, like I want to watch them, obviously, but I'm waiting like I'm not about to go and ruin this because um, I want I want the full experience. I want this as if it was like real Survivor um, and you don't know what people say until the show airs. And I think that would be a fun way to do it is taking um, taking all of us and doing like a weekend where we record five episodes or six episodes, however many yeah. episodes we need yeah. and do it all in one or two days and then put them out one by one with okay, like you really know good editing. Well, the other thing about that is then we're kind of living on the island um, yep. in some ways, which I, you know, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of living on the island and then I think a lot more stuff can happen. I, I definitely, even if Fiend doesn't want to do another season, I'll host another season. I'll get, I actually am friends with a couple guys that played some reality shows that are on Twitch. I'll even like pull them in and mix them with like gamers. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what can really go down. Um, is she but, doing no. like, this is still going on, right? Like this yeah. tomorrow's, tomorrow's another uh, episode. Yep. Tomorrow's another well, episode. I think, I think you're, I think you can still come because I think te like what ends up happening in Survivor is everyone voted out ends up voting for the winner. Uh huh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, ends up voting for the winner. So you probably at least want to pay a little attention. I I, I feel like again, that should have been indicated. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 it's it's still fun. Um, but I think yeah, like I I'm interested in another season of this. Um, if, if she's not like if you're doing it, that's awesome. Um, and I don't even mind like being like I kind of want to be part of it, but I also kind of just want to help planning maybe. Um. Yeah, planning so and producing. Because yeah, you were yeah. you were saying to me the other day that like having having me run around as cameraman or producer would be a good like way to you know use use the spare person that's going to be on the island at that point. Because mm -hmm. yeah. even like we well, do, that, yeah. I mean, you can just like listen in on the confessionals and stuff. Because I feel like that's the one thing that I really want to see once this is all over is everyone else's confessionals. Yeah. Because yep. Like, A, Jakku runs to the confessional as soon as the thing is <laughs> Same, yeah. dude. And B, what? like, and B, like, I don't know, I don't know about everyone else, but like, I've told, I in the confessional, I'm like, yes, I'm aligned with these people. I don't want to say who it is right out loud in case someone's, yeah, you know, listening, you know, but I mean, like, yes, I'm aligned with these people. This is our, you know, this is the plan we've talked about, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of, I definitely want to see what happens, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah, and, and it, it sucks that we have to like re like it's great that we record them on Twitch, the confessionals, but it also sucks. Like I almost feel like we should, I, we can't stop streaming to do it. Yeah, but like I I don't want anyone to stumble upon them because they could tell the other streamers, and like even if the streamer doesn't go looking, somebody could go into their chat and ruin it. Yeah, it takes one really, chat, dickhead. Yeah, but we'll see. Um, so far I haven't heard anything. Um. So it's good. But yeah, at the end of that episode, though, I was, you know, X Water was kicked off of the blue team. And uh, because red was then four to two, uh, the decision was to move a red team member to to blue. And I was the one that got moved to blue. So it's back to three to verse three. So at least it's fair in that regard, I guess. Um, yeah, this week should what, make for some like, I think some really, really good like games. And mm -hmm. I, I will say, too, is that like the 
poop and cherries was an incredibly good idea. Like that was yeah. so because everyone's doing their competitive Animal Crossing stuff already, and we've seen so many like you know um, musical chairs games and net arenas and sumo yeah. wrestling stuff, and it's like. I re what I really liked was Fiend brought a lot of creativity to the games she she made. Like, mm -hmm. eating poop was just no. I I've not seen anyone else do eating poop. Right. I, absolutely. Fish I, horse I was pretty it was pretty cool as well. And the the vaulting game was like, it was really was, like it was really cool. Like, it was a really good idea to you know basically test your mashing or strategy skills when it came yeah. down to it because you guys started trying to just vault over our like buried bodies yeah yeah exactly there's there's a lot there's a lot of ways you can do uh games in this game which is really fun to see like it, it doesn't seem like there's gonna be much but then all of a sudden there's tons yeah so it's 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 good it's it's exciting i'm, I'm excited for tomorrow night uh it starts again at seven or is it six seven eastern i, I believe seven eastern seven yes. eastern yes. yes that's right cool thank yeah. you i will need to make sure i am prepared beforehand and no turn of exchange for me what well, mm -hmm. yeah you're and you're on the other team I'm now other you, team, me yeah. and me and jacku were on the same team but now you got the twist was that you got sent over to the other team what a twist yeah um and now we're now we're mortal enemies i know if 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 me you and x water were on blue from the start blue the war world team original members Absolutely. We well, yeah. it would have been that would have been what here's the th i'm kind of glad they didn't do that because it would have definitely drawn some lines in our podcast if we had to vote one of us off. For sure. uh, they would, it would have had some distinct lines being drawn. You know what I That's mean? Fair. Like, That's fair. I, I, I was not ready to address those questions, nor yeah. have them addressed for me. You know, um, yeah. I thought long and hard about that. I was, I was worried. I was like, are those two motherfuckers going to gang up on me? Which one should <laughs> I use to gang up on the other? You know what I mean? Like, right. That's you fair. know. At least now, yeah, now we're not in that situation. X Water's on blue. He's gone. We didn't have anything to do with it other than kicking his ass in mini games. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But and then, <laughs> um, and then now I'm on blue, and you don't have to worry about voting me off. Yeah, no, yeah. that's fair. Well, I, I'd imagine it's only going to go one more time with tribes, and then we got to merge into solos. You know, I was what thinking I mean? two more. Maybe, but I feel like the problem is if like two more, if you get because one of us is gonna have two, and then they're just gonna vote for each other. You can't vote. Sure, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just that's just my opinion. But I, I I would imagine we're gonna go because that's where the real fun is too. Because that's when people really start to to backstab. But right, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So uh, let's move on. Do we want to talk about cyber cyberpunk? Um, it's a game is get, coming out. You guys know. Um, there was Resident Evil 8 talk that I want to talk about real briefly. It's okay. a huge yeah. departure of the, the game series, apparently. We have no idea. Yeah, uh, 2021. Mean, they're gonna, yeah. It's going to be a first person shooter like Resident Evil 7 was. Yep. But I'd imagine it's also going to have uh, VR attached to it because that was really popular. It's um, going to have zombies, probably. Um, yeah. But maybe not. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, maybe you play as the zombie. How about that? Oh, that yeah. would be actually really interesting if you like played as a zombie. Yeah, mm. I'd be into that. Yeah, this is what's interesting about it. It's supposed to be in the spinoff series Revelations, which oh, and then they sort of like, oh, this is so good. We'll just make it a mainline game. Well, uh, interesting, I guess, but I, that doesn't get me. So have you guys played the Revelations si spinoff? I played uh, yeah. a little I don't bit. Don't think they're the awesome. worst. Yeah, they're okay. interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I thought it looked good on the 3DS at the time. Yeah. I mean, it was fine. It was a fine. I played it. It was a fine Resident Evil game. You were on a boat. Yeah. Which was an interesting setting for it, I guess. But the problem with, like, being on a boat is that's you're just on that boat, you know? You can't get off that boat. You're yeah. On the boat. Yeah. Um, that's, that's not the only Resident Evil game that took place on a boat. Resident Evil Gaiden on the Game Boy Color. Oh you, yeah, you, you that was a son of a boat. Yo, it's that's a, that game's buried. better than it has any business being, too. You know, what I mean? <laughs> right? Yeah, but yeah, that's that's they like the boat setting. Um, didn't they do a Resident Evil like one for the Game Boy Color? They did the remake. It, yeah, it, it never got released, but there was a uh, it the ROM did get released, and it yeah. was actually surprisingly good looking. Yeah, it's like it's like a decent. 
little version of it. Yeah, the fact they were able to fit a, a, a CD basically onto a Game Boy cartridge and it was still the game like is insane to me. Um, but it was it was really cool to see. And like I remember seeing it in a magazine back in the 90s when they announced it and then it got like no, it got canceled. And then like sometime later, like five, ten years ago, it got released. And it's like, oh, my God, that's amazing. This is yeah. so cool. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I haven't played seven yet, but same. It'll be probably cool. I'm sure to be fine. Yeah, probably play it before eight now. But uh, yeah, I probably yeah. exactly. I will probably play before eight. Uh, let's go into this week's side questions. Then all right, yeah, let's do let's, it. Let's just go questions. ahead and do it. You know, we're gonna pull up this first one from uh, Manic T here. Ooh, Manic T likes to ask us questions, and this one starts no differently. All Hello. right, crossed animals. He, he crossed that, but um, mix those up. Uh, what are some aspects about the gaming industry that you feel are taken way too seriously? What are some aspects that you are surprised aren't taken more seriously? I don't mean along the lines of people get mad at competitive games. I mean things like concerns or passions around crunch, company drama, microtransactions, game mechanics, etc. All right. Our start. Mm -hmm. this, this is probably a, not a very popular opinion, um, but crunch time is very much a thing that has been in the gaming industry for many many years many generations and i'm not saying that that makes it right but i think it's something that is to be expected if you're working at a game company and i think people are Ooh. taking like it's your choice to work in that industry i guess and knowing that that's how it is right now you're making those choices to have crunch time um, things are getting better for, for employees at many companies and a lot of companies are like saying no to crunch time and that's great. But I think being upset about it happening, um, unless you're having it happen because you got thrown into that situation, like you should have known what you're getting yourself into. I, I agree and disagree with you a little bit here because sure. it's like, I, I kind of agree on the sense that like it is over, over stated a little bit almost at this point mm -hmm. like every time a game's coming towards the end of of its life cycle we've seen it a lot with cyberpunk and with a lot of the big releases there's a lot of articles surrounding the crunch around it we saw it with doom with um red dead with uh the cyberpunk and like we we all know that that is a reality of these projects even warp world when we have you know deadlines to meet any any company with deadlines to meet has crunches any company whether they're making video games whether they're making whatever but there there definitely is like there is a reason that there's so much attention being thrown into it in the media and like there is a validity to the the fight for trying to make these crunches less severe because some sometimes it's like all right you're working 70 hours this week and it's like fuck man that's rough but sometimes it's like yo you're working 90 hours for the next two months and it's like that's fucked yeah i mean so i i will like i will admit uh i am a very dedicated hard worker that puts a lot of time into my work humble brag um, <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm, I just I'm just playing. Yeah. But yeah, like I I I I wouldn't say I live for work, but work drives me. Um and so for me, mm -hmm. even if even if I'm overwhelmed, it's still something I enjoy doing. Um and I've been like this since you guys have known me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like it's always crunch time for me. And I think like I get it. Like that's what that's what it is. That's what like innovation can be it, or it has to be. You have to always be thinking of the next thing and doing the next thing as much as possible. Um and so, like, to me, it's like, it's, it comes with the territory. Um, I understand that everyone has that lifestyle. Um, but they can still make great games, even if they don't agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I... I mean, I'm not going to get into crunch. I, I, I understand it. I don't like it. But mm -hmm. I, think the pro I think the problem is that People want things now and people want things fixed now. Yep. And it's kind of like a, it's almost like a necessary evil in some ways. Like, I, I don't, it's not something, I, I wish there was a perfect situation where it wasn't needed, sure. but it's, it, it, it is. Like, I, I know, I understand it, especially, no, uh, especially a lot more now that I've been around you 
been around warp world, seen how things have to get, like just have to get done. Sometimes they have to get fixed. Sometimes shit breaks overnight. Sometimes, you know what I mean? These things all happen and there's, there's just kind of no getting around it sometimes. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say I agree with you, but I understand. I think it's a necessary evil. Um, I think the all, I mean, like I was saying, I think all microtransactions are evil is a, the dumbest fucking thing that has ever existed. And I'll go a step further. I, and I, I fully believe this. And I know you agree with me on this, Jakku. I think when the Xbox One wanted to go online only, it would have been A, a significantly better console, and B, uh, people made way bigger a deal out of that than it actually was. It was yeah. not a big deal at all. Agree. Not even in the slightest. Yeah, people like to cause and, and create drama um, in that sort of situation. And like they don't understand the, the benefits of that. They just see a, a minor down, downside, and it's so the end small. of the world. They, they, they definitely take these, these small problems and then make them seem to be like a larger thing. I think it would have done a lot to get games into a better space of where, where they need to be. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, it, I don't know. It would have been, it, it was a right move for Microsoft to try and do. And I wish that the communities understood it more and, and consumers thought more about it than, than just being angry and getting their pitchforks as soon as it was said. Dude, I, I thought, like, I was so amazed at how short-sighted everyone felt about it. Because, like, what I saw was, like, one guy buys a game and seven people can play it. That's right. what I saw on it. You know what I mean? So you get exactly. seven friends, and you guys just decide what fucking cool game you want to buy that. You know what I mean? And then you, you have access to, like, so many games at that point. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I always saw it as. Yeah. You and, and, you and it seven just friends felt like buy every game. And it yeah. wouldn't even matter. It wouldn't. Yeah. You'd have seven people contributing to this little pool of games. You know what I mean? It would have been the shit. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That that one always mystified me, honestly. Yep. I, I agree with that, though. Yeah. All right. What's uh, something that people should take more seriously? Ooh. Uh, I got a one for this, too, actually. All right. Go for it. Uh, so yesterday, I'm playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. And one of the characters uh, lifts her arm, and her bracelet slid down her arm. Mm. And that attention to detail, like it like realistically slid down her arm and they like cackled together, you know what I mean? Yeah. That attention to detail is something that all games need to take way more seriously. Uh, I hope in the next generation, uh, the static backgrounds are gone, the invisible walls are gone, the walls that are half high and for some reason your character can't jump over them, but he can totally jump you know, eight feet high in the air, but can't jump over this one little table that's set up magically. I think all those attention to details, those detail aspects are the things that consumers, programmers, everyone needs to take more seriously and appreciate more. I, I got to mention this because it's, it's relevant. Um, I was complaining about a step ladder in Resident Evil 3 last night. Um, like it was blocking my way. And I'm like, it's literally just another step off of the stairs that I'm currently going up just to oh step over. God. Well, and, and why I'm complaining, I'm like looking at the step ladder, I'm like, you're not my real ladder, you're step ladder. <laughs> um, zombies attacked me. Um, which is funny, but like, yeah, I, I wish I wish games had that because there was there were some points in that game where I could jump over bigger things than normal. And then there was other aspects where it's like, dude, that you're you're an ex like special uh uh special troop well, i don't can't, can't think of the word special ops uh cop right now like how can you not walk over this or jump over that or hop over it right uh, and yeah i would love to see games take that a little bit more seriously with like no there's something really big here dropping and then there was a few moments where it's like oh i can squeeze through that which was like finally i don't have to go around you you know you can do this like i think that would be something that should be taken more seriously absolutely like use the environment to 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 actually look more like a real environment and allow the player to uh, to can um play in that environment and don't use it as a restrictive boundary system yeah that's a good point yeah yeah i agree um one thing that i'm surprised that isn't taken more seriously and i'm not on team like i'm not on the team that like wants this or anything but it's just so weird to me that a game like fortnite that is based off of shooting people in the head which is the thing that you should never do to someone is so heavily you know like cherished by children it's just weird that that 
it's just weird how desensitized shooting people uh is in in a game like that and like i almost feel like we i don't know but there, I, I feel like there isn't a whole lot of hubbub about things like that like you just slap the right the right amount of blood into the game and it's like all right they you shot them but they didn't bleed so it's it's pg-13 it's cool and it's like i don't know man you shot you sh you shot the guy like that feels weird to me that the act of shooting someone can be anything less than mature like 17 18 plus you know what i mean yeah like, i i get I, I get what you're saying i like cartoony shooting is still shooting a gun and should be respected and taken seriously i think that you know what i think that's like almost like a weird like a like a and this sounds so weird like a cultural difference between you living on that side of the river and me living on yeah the Detroit side of the river is, you know, like just America's desensitized. We're so desensitized to guns. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah it's I, so. Yeah. I, I actually have like two stories on this in middle yeah. school. Uh, Golden. I was a big game in middle school. Yeah. Obviously. Uh -huh. um, we had this after school thing. It wasn't last key or anything. It was like, we would go home and then go back to the school after three hours or something. And we'd hang out from like six to nine. Um, but a lot of us would play video games there and they allowed us to play Goldeneye as long as paintball mode was on. <laughs> um, and every now and then they'd check and like, is paintball mode on? And we're, we're like, yeah. And they'd make us shoot the wall. Like, okay. Um, All right, you can so funny. Yeah. And then uh, in high school, I, we had a tech club and we were able to organize a land party um, and I got sponsors for it. And that was ball sponsored it. It was really cool. Um, but we want to play Counter-Strike and the school only let us do it if we replace the knife with a fish and the guns again shot paintballs. And so I showed them the mods in Counter-Strike where it was a fish instead. And as soon as they left, we turned them all off <laughs> but, um, because they're not staying overnight. Yeah. Like, you know, so but like I just had to show them that, yeah, it's a fish and yeah, it's paintball. But that was the only way to allow us to do it. And that was like, OK, safe. Mm -hmm. I had um when I was a kid, I had my friends. uh parents wouldn't let them come to my house for like two years because my uh, sister rented me Mortal Kombat 2. We had to, <laughs> to rent it, you know what I mean? And she gave it to me. I was like eight years old and let me play it. Like, yeah. but I had been playing Mortal, I played Mortal Kombat 1 the shit out of that one too, you know what I mean? I, I understood you shouldn't rip out someone's heart. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, so I, I had yeah, I had a, like a weekend long sleepover and this kid goes home and tells his parents all the shit we were doing and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Couldn't go to my house for years after that. That's uh, funny. Yeah. Um, uh, good times. Violent video games. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, kids, I, kids I like... see what you're saying, though. I think I, I totally agree that I feel like just yeah. like I don't feel the difference between Halo shooting and Fortnite shooting is that drastic. And I would right. almost argue that Fortnite shooting is. More. Because the guns are the guns themselves are actually pretty realistic. Everything else about the game is not, but the guns themselves are pretty realistic. Like you, well, kids say, scar. They know a pistol. They know a deagle. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh -huh. They know all these things. That well, also, I, I get what people. you're saying. You're also shooting people instead of like aliens in Fortnite. Yeah, 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 totally. Like in in you know in Halo. Like Halo. I, I don't. Halo is an M rated game, but I can't think of. I, I mean, I understand that there's blood in it, but I can't think of one time where blood is shooting out of anything. It was definitely not the focus at all. No. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that should be that should tie into it a lot. But yeah, like I think Pooh's completely right. Like we have a small, we have a different understanding of it because like America, like I'm playing Resident yeah. Evil Three and I'm like in the hospital. I'm like, all right, where are the bullets at? I'm in, <laughs> I'm in this area. And I'm like, where are the bullets at? I'm like, it's this is America. Come on, there's bullets here. There's bullets you know, there. There's yeah, bullets yeah, everywhere. I mean, that's, yeah, that's Church the one thing bullets. about, you know, like, yeah, if the if America and if Jaku needed a gun in America, he was the only person left in America. He would literally have to go into I'd find maybe in 10 minutes. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, like, maybe three houses. Maybe, yeah, you right. know, I, I just have to look Top. like and, and Chicago had like a huge ban on guns, but like not anymore. Um, But like, yeah, like still would have found them. Yeah, still would have found them. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I remember you like you playing right sort of Gary and you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I remember playing like my fair share of like Goldeneye and like doing all that dumb shit that you shouldn't do as as a kid. And, and you know, I don't think I think I I turned out just fine. I'm not I'm not like 
advocating for like we need to get the yeah, yeah, yeah. guns out of these kids video it's just weird that i don't i feel like it's weird that i don't see more buzz about it sure no yeah i i, I feel you on that and like yeah like as a kid i i i knew shooting people was bad yeah exactly um, after the third but time. but i will say i i think that there is like there's also this weird side effect of like i feel like there's a lot of people out there and i'm not saying this is the majority of people but i do know for a fact that there are some people out there that think because they are somewhat good at call of duty that that would translate to them actually being able to to shoot in a real life situation Mm -hmm. and they they told they think they can and they are so drastically wrong and that part is a little bit scary. You know what I mean? Now, I, I don't think that's like leading to violence. I think that's just like a false confidence in a survival situation where these guys think like, oh, yeah, man, I'll get a headshot. No problem. You know what I mean? They all think they're fucking Rick Grimes or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the military has capitalized on that and been like, play Call of Duty mm-hmm. in real life. Well, yeah, they, they've had that, like, they had that military game for a while, too. Yeah, like it was a straight up American Army. Army. Yeah. 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 That's how they were like trying to recruit people for a while. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. You you know, they might even still be doing it. I mean, the problem is the problem is war isn't actually fun. It's tedious right. and long, and, and it's mm-hmm. tough. Yeah, and it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It turns out the war's not that dank. Yeah, no. I, kinda, you, I wish it was kind of um, the American Army was kind of like a, what was the movie uh, Last Starfighter situation, mm-hmm. where like if you were really good, the army would come to your house. Because it'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna aim bot. So I'm like, oh, headshots, and then like it's sending all your information back to the army, and it's like, yeah. oh my god, this guy hasn't missed a shot all we game. We need this like, guy. Need this dude, guy. he's got the high score on this mission. Like, we this is literally a mission we ran last year. This guy would yeah. have saved us all. You know, <laughs> we need him on tech ops stat. <laughs> oh, that'd be so funny. All right, uh, I guess we got time for one more. Uh, this one it comes from crazy. Crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're doing crazies. Uh, hey, Animal Warpers, what is your favorite absolutely accidental god gamer moment? For example, one shotting a level unexpected, in, unexpectedly, or defeating a boss with zero struggles. Additionally, what is your most shameful, worst gaming or gameplay moment? Thanks for keeping things light through this time. This is a good one. This is uh, a good one. It's also yeah. kind of tough. Um, it is my accidental gaming moment. Yeah, it's hard I, to. I know one frax water. Oh, okay. A Twitch chat was helping you. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was Fortnite. thinking of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we did uh, crowd control on Fortnite, and I was like, I had my sights aimed down for a sniper, and I was like, okay, chat, shoot the gun, shoot the gun, shoot the gun. Somebody shoots the gun using crowd control. We get a headshot and kill the dude. It was oh, like, oh my god! It couldn't have been more perfect. First try as well. Like it was the first yeah. time we had tried it. It's not like we were going for it for hours or anything. Like just first try with chat shooting, we got the Fortnite snipe. It was sick. That's amazing. Um, you know what? I don't have I don't have one that I can think of in gaming, but I do have a snowboarding accidental moment. All right. Um. So I I was uh. My favorite thing of snowboarding were like was like bonks, and one of the bonks at Heavenly Mountain was this. Basically, it was like a a oil barrel hanging from a chain off like an eight foot jump. You go about eight eight foot up high off the air and the jump. You know, you you basically like bonk it and let it spin you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like hanging off a chain like a punching bag, right? So yeah. I go up and I go to spin backside. And I catch my back, like my back edge, and I go up in the air. I flip upside down. My board slaps off the off the like little, you know, barrel thing, mm-hmm. and just like whips me around, just like whips me around into a crazy, insane spin. And then all of a sudden, I don't know how, but I just land back on my feet on the perfect downslope as if nothing happened, as if I planned the whole thing and the smoothest landing I had ever pulled off. My two buddies who were with me just like lost their fucking mind because they were like, we thought you were dead and then you wrote it out. So um, that is definitely my my number one thing. Like I, I literally should have landed on my neck and broke my neck at that point. Um, but got lucky wow. and landed on my feet. So 
all worked out. <laughs> it's crazy what the body can kind of do without yeah. the brain. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like some instinct took over and like my body was like upside down and spinning, knows how to go, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it was like, it was like no snow even came up type of landing too, like perfectly mm-hmm. in motion landing, you know? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th- this is tough. Um, I don't know. There, there's def- there's tons of them. There, we we have all of these moments all the time, and it's just yeah, you don't you don't keep little. them in your head. Yeah, they're yeah. Like, oh, for a moment, and then nothing. What makes it so um, hard to answer is that we're 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 god gamers. God gamers uh-oh. don't make accidental god gamer moments. It's all on purpose. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, it's hard. It's hard. I don't really get to do anything accidental in fucking Kaizo levels. You know what I mean? Right. It doesn't like yeah. accidentally ever happen. Yeah, I, the, the like the the most accidental thing I can think of involving Mario Maker is one of the races I think at Kellython. It was that one of those boot levels where you guys were all going over the spikes and I kept going under them instead. And like that was an accident because I just couldn't get the over the right way, but it worked out for me. And that was an accidental thing each <laughs> time I did it. It was yeah. really silly um worst gaming moment i mean last night like i i guess my resident evil 3 playthrough was pretty shameful compared to resident evil 2 like i feel like resident evil 2 i breezed through um i don't i don't know if i died i might have died in resident evil 2 a few times but i died like a bunch in resident evil 3 uh yesterday and monday and that was pretty shameful because i'm like i'm normally good at these games but i did hear that they upped the ais and stuff so maybe game game ai is just getting better yeah possibly I yeah. think my most shameful moments are always whenever, like, whenever I get cocky. It's as soon as I get cocky oh. about how good I am at the game or doing well. Every time. As soon as I do, it's yep. like, oh, of the time, and you lose. Dead. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Doesn't I matter refuse, what game it is. I refuse to trash talk for that reason alone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, it's like, gonna, Counter Strike. Yeah. As soon as I compliment my own personal gameplay, yeah. as yep. soon as I do it, I immediately die. Yeah. No matter what happens, I immediately die and just everything, everything unfolds, you know? Yeah, yeah I can yeah. remember I had one, one clip uh, of me running Mario 64. I'm doing the first Bowser level. I'm on like probably like the best pace. I've. It's not that far in the run, mind you, but I'm on like a really good pace, getting real confident, real cocky. I, I'm at the part where like you do that long jump t- like right from the corner of that very perilous long like chain of electric balls that spin so you long jump to that platform in the middle and then you have to jump to the red coin that's on the moving platform and it's like as i'm doing it i'm like easy jumps that's why they call me never miss jump mick and as i'm saying it i do a dive into the wall and fall in the fucking void like an asshole yep Yep. every time every single time never miss a jump mick he missed a jump that day yeah (laughs) all right well, time to That'll wrap do this it. up. That will do it. That will do, do it. big. 142. In the books. I feel like we've been um, in the 40s forever, which is yep. weird. It does feel Until like it. Yeah, the 30s zoomed yes. by. It's because it's quarantine, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's because we quarantine. can't go anywhere. Everything, everything just feels long now, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Very, very long. Yep. Yeah. But it's yeah. always fun. It's uh, good to see you guys here at the Fruit Ranch once again. Yeah, and thanks everybody who uh, all of our new uh, listeners or viewers who might be coming from Turnip Exchange. Thanks for coming by, and I hope you consider subscribing to this pay- podcast, not Patreon. We'll get to that. <laughs> uh, subscribing to this podcast, leaving a five star review, and um, if you love it so much that you just don't know what to do with yourself, then th- only then should you consider going to Patreon.warp.world and you know choosing the tier that's right for you if you feel that you want to. Help help keep the uh, the lights on over here in this little podcast studio. Yeah. Um, and speaking of keeping the lights on, we did just launch merch. Um, that is for Turnup Exchange, but it's Warp World merch at uh, merch.warp.world. We have a we have some phone cases, um, some a new shirt and stickers. Um, and we we we're working on a mug. We're working on a few other things. So more more merch is coming for those that want to get something out of their support. Um, and just you know, hey, the the turnip exchange thing has blown up. We we mentioned about the servers and stuff and whatnot, but we've had over half a million unique visitors to the site in just over a week. Um, 
and it's just insane. We've never had something with that much traction. Um, it's getting us a lot of attention. We're spending a lot of time on it. So obviously donations and merchandise, uh, if you buy anything or you, you, you sub to anything, greatly appreciate it. Um, if you enjoy the service, we would greatly appreciate it. But if you enjoy the service, you know, tell a friend that's just as good. Um, pass it on. We're, we're going to do more to, to improve it. But uh, thank you so much for, for enjoying our service and using it. Um, it looks like we're doing something right at least. Yeah. It has been crazy, you know, like just yeah. watching, just sitting in the Discord has been insane. So, yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's caused some distress. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, it's 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 been overall good. Um, you know, I'll be snarky a little bit every now and then. Um, it, the the biggest thing is just people got to read a little bit. That's that's it. Just a little, but uh, it's fine. Yeah, we we'll get through it. We we'll get through it um thank you guys so much thank you for poo and x water once again for coming to the island always you happy to be here awesome all right have it's a great always, week always everybody a fun time Bye, all right everyone. peace